What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, we're going to be going over the key amazing Spider-Man books that sold in this week's weekly Heritage Comic Auction. We're going to be looking at how they performed compared to my expectations and where it looks like these books are going to be going in the future. Let's check these out. All right, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So I had a comment after last week's video where I was going over the big Silver Age keys and someone had commented that it, they would like me to go over some of the less expensive books. You know, not necessarily the books that are going to cost tens of thousands of dollars each. You know, it was like X-Men number one, Journey into Mystery one, Fantastic Four one, all that kind of stuff. Now, there are a couple big books that are in this because there are some big books that sell in the weekly Heritage Comic Auction, but we've definitely got a wider range this time. Some books that are in the hundreds of dollars uh, to the low thousands, and then, of course, there was an Amazing Fantasy 15 that sold this week, so there is an expensive book out there. But let's start checking out these books because uh, it's always fun to look at Spider-Man. Spider-Man really is kind of one of the big bellwethers for the comic market because he's just the most popular comic book character that is out there. So it's always interesting to see how those books are performing. What I've got here, I always show this. Uh, this is the recap from that weekly Heritage Comic Auction. You can see this was actually a pretty strong week. Uh, $678,400. Now that doesn't necessarily mean the prices were strong. It just means that there were a lot of big books that were in this auction getting up near that $700,000 mark. Uh, when I talked about that big sale that Heritage had a couple weeks ago, the weekly auction after that one was a little over 700,000, which is strong for a weekly, but this is, uh, this was a strong set of books too. And you can see right on the top there, Part of that is there was this Amazing Fantasy 15 4.5 sold for over $40,000. And so we will definitely be talking about that one. Before we get into these, I know Mickey talked about this book. You can see we were competing. We were competing for this one. <laughs> he talked about this one on his channel. Uh, this is the Captain America Comics number three. Neither of us won this book. Uh, this was the only book that I bid on this week. It just it caught my attention. I thought, you know, maybe I'd throw in a couple bids. Uh, and so I had bid up to 7,200. I still think 8,400 was a great pickup for this, but, uh, if you've been watching my channel all recently, I bought a collection recently and spent quite a bit of money on it. So I wasn't super motivated to drop a bunch more money right away. Uh, but I, I do think this was a good pickup. It's a brittle page copy. It's got restoration, that kind of thing, but the restoration on this one could actually get it back to universal with what's on the notes there. I just figured kind of like a quick little, uh, uh, detour here, you know, pieces added, reinforced, small coupon missing, all those things can be undone. And so this one could be a universal, maybe it gets down to a 1-0, who knows. Uh, but it's a brittle page copy, but still looks really nice. Uh, I mean, getting Captain America 3 under 10 grand, I mean, that's pretty uh, tough to do <laughs> now. So, and a, and a solid looking copy. I mean, you can tell where the pieces were, were added. It's like all along the spine. Um, so it's really not going to impacting any of the major art or anything. I've seen somewhere, you know, somebody added on a huge piece down in the corner uh, before. And so if you got that removed, it's going to have a huge impact on it. But I think this would still look pretty nice as a blue label. So whoever got that, I still think you got a you got a good pickup on that one, even though I, I let it go after this uh, $7,200 bid. But all right, let's start talking about Amazing Spider-Man. I'm going to start at the newest book and move to the oldest. So we are going to start with this book right here, which is Amazing Spider-Man 361, a 9.8 newsstand, first appearance of Carnage. This was a book I always wanted when I was a kid, but I could not afford <laughs> that first appearance of Carnage. I had the second appearance. That was the one I could get. And, you know, first appearance was just too expensive for me uh, at the time when I was a kid. So this went for $444. I actually had it going for $450. You know, this was right in line. I mean, 1% under my estimate, but that's less than one bid. Basically, <laughs> like one more bid would have gotten it uh, quite a bit over. So really pretty much in line. Now, this book had had some crazy sales during the comic boom. If we check out Amazing Spider-Man 361, we go to the 9-8 newsstand. I technically have the high as 2,449, 
but there was this one sale at 4,750. I don't personally believe that sale. I think there's something, it's just way too off. It was like triple what everything else was going around there. So I don't think that was probably a real sale, but I mean, if it was, I mean, even worse, <laughs> but uh, every, this is during the comic boom, everything Venom and Carnage and Spider-Man was going crazy with all the null storyline and the, uh, the Spider-Man movie come or the, the Venom movie coming out with Carnage as one of the main characters. It just, it went nuts, but, uh, but yeah, it has corrected significantly, but now it's really looking like a pretty safe book to buy. The downside risk feels pretty low. I mean, this one going for $444 for a newsstand from 1992. So this is a time period because I know some people they get a little bent out of shape with the newsstand stuff, uh, but it's a time period where newsstands are, are less common. And if we go back to just like 2019, you know, this was a book that was going for $375, $400, sometimes more than that $444 sale, $475 there, $450 here. I mean, given that, this feels like a pretty safe point now to pick up this book. I mean, if we're looking at the at this long, you know, trend for this one, I mean, prior to the comic boom, you know, this was a book that was going for an average of around $400. It's now at around $450 many years later. And it's not like Carnage isn't popular. You know, Spider-Man's popular, Carnage is popular, Venom is popular, all the symbiote stuff. So this does feel like a pretty reasonable price point for this book. I wouldn't be too concerned picking it up. I don't think it's necessarily going to go rocketing back up anytime soon, but I feel like your downside risk is probably pretty low. All right, now let's go to the next one. And we're sticking with the, the symbiote... Uh, trend here and we've got an amazing spider-man 300 9.8 white pages sold for three thousand three hundred and sixty dollars i had this one going for 3100 its record during the comic boom was 9200 if you go into the newsstands the newsstand i think had a record sale of around twenty five thousand. that one has corrected quite a bit as well but yeah this beat my estimate by eight percent pretty reasonable sale for this book. This one has definitely been correcting. I mean, let's take a look at Amazing Spider-Man 300 and just get an idea where those prices are again today versus what this book was going for prior to the, the big spikes that we saw during the comic boom. And so we go down to the 9.8. We can actually see that's the, the most recent sale that's here on GPA. Uh, $3,360. This trend, this makes me feel like this book is still going down. I would still be cautious about this book. I mean, look at where this one was really selling in, you know, the time period prior to the comic boom. So we're going to take out the stuff that's at the end of the year. It was definitely already spiking by the end of 2020. If we go to the early part of the year, this was a book that was selling between kind of Low end, 1560. That's a pretty low sale there. Uh, upper end, around 2000. There's this one $2,950 sale. But this looks like a book that before the comic boom, you could comfortably say this was a $2,000 book, maybe 2100. And right now it's going for 3360, still up 50%. Now it is four years later. So you can always take that into account. Like how much does this book move up each year? It is one of the most popular in demand books of all time. It's the most graded book on the census. If we take a look at the census, it means 28,684 universal copies, 35,926 total. This is a book that there is no shortage of. I mean, 1,545 9.8s, 10 9.9s. I mean, there are a lot of these out there. I would not be rushing out to buy this book right now, personally. I mean, when I look at this trend, I don't see that it's really leveled off yet. I see this really long period prior to the spike in prices where it was pretty flat. And so I don't necessarily think it, it's going to get back all the way to there. I don't know if it'll get back all the way to 2000, but I could see this book going under three. I could see it pretty easily going under 3000. Uh, even last year, you can see a low sale, 2700. It did dip below 3000 on a few occasions. So I would not be rushing out to buy this book. I would keep waiting. If you've been looking to pick up a 9.8 of Amazing Spider-Man 300, 
I would wait. Now, again, I'm just talking about this grade. I'm not looking at the other grades. Other grades could have corrected more or less, uh, but at least in the 9.8, I would still be cautious about this book. All right. Now let's check out another big, amazing Spider-Man key. Amazing Spider-Man number 238 sold for 1,050. I was wondering if this drop here maybe had something to do with the, the comic scam thing that was going on, because this was one of the books that was part of it. However, Amazing Spider-Man 300 was the most graded book that was part of that whole CGC scam situation. And that one had a solid sale, had a strong sale. So I don't know, maybe this person just got a total steal for this book because I had this book going for $1,700, sold for 1050 I mean, the record during the comic boom was 3,604 down a ton. Now let's take a close look. Like maybe there's something going on with this book where someone just didn't like the look of it. Maybe it had shifted in the case and got a crunch and you can see a couple spine ticks, like a couple very obvious spine ticks, but we've talked about this. You can have spine ticks in a nine, eight. Those are two pretty big ones though. I mean, that's about the extent of what you might be able to get with a nine, eight. So let's keep scrolling down, see if there's anything else that really jumps out on this copy. Nothing really so far. I mean, the, the edges and everything right now look look pretty good. I mean, this is a, it's a decent enough looking copy. This is another one of those where I would say, you know, you send this in 10 times, maybe five, six times, it gets a nine, six. The other part of the time it gets the nine, eight. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's got these, those are two pretty big spine ticks. I, I'm almost certain neither of these are part of the art. Uh, this one definitely cuts across stuff. So I, I doubt either of those are, are part of the art. So I would say it's a, it's a little bit of a weak nine, eight, uh, it, the white back cover. It's really hard to see if there are any of those flaws that transfer to the back. Um, but I, I have a hard time thinking that's why this book went for a thousand fifty. I mean, let's check it out. Let's go check out ASM. 238 first appearance of the hobgoblin again a book that sells all the time and so it takes a little bit of time for those to load but here you can see what i mean I mean, we've got that nine eight this this was the low for the last four years you know it hasn't sold this low since 2020 and i mean the last sale just three weeks ago 1826 I mean, I think somebody, they really did just steal this book, despite the two spine ticks. <laughs> I think they really did steal this book. But let's check where this one was prior to the comic boom. I mean, let's look at 2019. And we can see it has some sales up above 1,000. And it had a lot of sales below. It looks like it's probably about a $1,000 book. So if you're talking about 2019, 2020 prices, this $1,050 sale is right back in line with those prices. Uh, again, do you think it's going to go all the way back there? Maybe, maybe not. It's definitely still on a downtrend. This is another book that while this was a very, you know, reasonable buy, I feel like the risk at 1050 is extremely low. And if you wanted, you could probably sell it again tomorrow for like 15 or 1600, but I wouldn't be paying those kind of like the $1,700 price that I estimated it at. I think at the $1,700 price, there is still a lot of downside risk with this book. And so I would be very cautious with it at market prices. But saying that, I think this was a very reasonable buy. I think the downside risk from 1,050 is extremely low and you likely won't see too many other sales at this type of price point. But Let's check out the, uh, I always think it's fun to, to check out the census on these books too. So let's see how many are out there of this, uh, of 238. You can see 9,312 universals, 12,029, a total 299, 729.98. So again, a book that there are quite a few of these out there and a lot of them in very high grade. Right. Now let's check out the next book. This is another one that was one of the big books that was part of this uh, CGC scam. Amazing Spider-Man 194, first appearance of the Black Cat. I had this book going for 2,600, went for 2,880. So again, another one that it was part of that whole scam situation, but this beat my estimate. You know, so I've said that before. I. I just, I don't think it's really having that much of an impact on prices. It doesn't seem to be, at least from what I've seen. And so this one beat my estimate by 11%. 
Uh, the record was basically double this. It had sold for 5,760 during the comic boom, but this was a solid sale for this book. Let's check out Amazing Spider-Man 194. I've always liked this book. I think it's a, uh, you know, this one is a newsstand. It's early on. This is about as early as you get where they actually designate a difference between the newsstand and non-newsstand. And so some people will say they don't think the newsstands in this era should sell for more because there's actually a lot more of them. There's way more newsstands out there than directs. But the question is always at the 9-8 level because the newsstands are more likely to have been handled more, damaged more, sitting on the racks. With Even though there are more of them, what are, is your likelihood of getting a 9-8 of that newsstand? And that's always the question. Unfortunately, CGC does not differentiate on the census between newsstand and direct. They have started differentiating on the label. They mark it on the label, but there is no differentiation in the actual census. But if we go to 194 here, you see there was already a sale that was a little, well, that was that was the, uh, the non-newsstand. So here we go to the newsstand. And this is one where, they don't have a lot of detailed information here. This is where GPA didn't start tracking the newsstands until later. And so it's a little harder to get that information here with it. Uh, that's why the actual record price that I had used was from this set of sales, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's newsstand or not. On, on GPA, there is a mix of newsstand and non-newsstands in some of these. So I just used the high sale, which was this 5,760. Uh, this one, it really does seem to be selling about the same for newsstand versus non-newsstand right now. Um, I don't think it's an unreasonable price. Uh, if we take a look here, again, if we look at the, the prices prior to the comic boom, I mean, this was a book that was going for 1700, 1800, kind of largely in that price point. It's up around 2800 right now. Yeah, again, maybe prices go up a little bit over time, but another one that I probably wouldn't be rushing out to get. I mean, when I look at this kind of this long flat area before the, the spikes and this general downtrend, it feels like it's still trending down. I, I think that this one could still go lower. If you're looking to pick up a nine, eight of amazing Spider-Man 194, I'd probably just keep waiting, you know, or again, if you find one for an absolute steal of a price like that, 238 went for go for it. But I would not be rushing out to pick up this book. All right. Now, one of everybody's favorite keys for Spider-Man. We've got an amazing Spider-Man 129, a 9.6 white pages copy. I had this going for 6,200, went for 6,000, 3% below my estimate. But again, that's pretty much as close as you can hope to get. It's basically right in line. No big surprises there. And this is a white page copy, something that's a little bit of a benefit for this book and a nice looking copy. I mean, this is the era where you have this Marvel Comics Group banner at the top, which if it's really off center or where it's tilted up, it can really take away from the visual appeal of the book. This one looks pretty nice. This is a pretty square looking book, but let's check out the pricing for Amazing Spider-Man 129 because this is another book that it went up a lot <laughs> during the comic boom. And so it has been correcting a lot too. It's peak sale in a 9.6 was $14,000. So this is down over 50%. If we take a look at that 9.6, again, you can see that's the last sale here on GPA. Some big drops. There were, it was holding on. It seemed pretty good for uh, almost all of last year. And then it's had some big, big drops lately. Uh, this wasn't even the low sale. Low sale was 5,520. Then you had one jump up to 7,000, then back down to 6,000. So it's been fighting here at this price point. It's fluctuating a lot. If we look again prior to the comic boom, this was a book that was, looks like largely going for, I'd say roughly around 4,500 in a nine, six. So up around 6,000, you're definitely, you're going to have some downside risk there. There is still some downside risk to this book. It's not super high. This is a very in-demand book. It's possible that it retains these types of values, but just know going into it that there is still some downside risk to Amazing Spider-Man 129. All right. Now it's Morbin time. We've got first appearance of Morbius, 7.5, book that went absolutely crazy. 
when we had that movie coming out and then it crashed extremely hard. This is a book that I had going for $400, sold for $432, so beat my estimate by 8%, still pretty much in line. This book in a 7.5 peaked at $1,700. This is down more than 75% or just about 75% at this price. And if we take a look at Amazing Spider-Man number 101, we are, we're now getting on pretty early in the, in the bronze age here. We're at 1971 I mean, let's check out the census. Just get an idea of the difference here. We've got 6,026 universals, 6,620 total, 38, nine eights, no nine nines. This is a book that there are a lot less copies out there in that really high grade. Now that we're getting to the early, early bronze age. But if we take a look at the, at the 7.5 here, we see again, there's that $432 sale. I mean, look what this book did during the comic boom. Just crazy. And now it's actually back below where it was prior to that spike in prices. And that's because there was the announcement about the Morbius movie. That definitely caused this big jump here. It looks like probably around uh, 2018, early 2018, we had a big jump. It's down below those prices. So again, this is a major Spider-Man key. This is one where I feel like your risk here is relatively low if you're getting it for prices below the spike from the movie. So this is one where you really want to look at the prices kind of, I don't know, around 2018. And if we look at 2018, this book was largely going for around 400 to $500. Then you can see where this is probably around the movie announcement somewhere in there where it jumped to six, $700. So again, just that's a book that it's an amazing Spider-Man key. It's a book a lot of people are going to want. There's tons of run collectors and key collectors out there for Spider-Man. This feels like a pretty low risk buy. Almost feels to me like it's probably overcorrected some. You know, and again, I'm just talking about the 7.5 grade, but this feels like it's overcorrected. It's just all the negativity that came from that movie. It's still, like I said, it's an amazing Spider-Man key. It's it's going to be a book that's always in demand. So I feel like your risk now at this price point very low. All right, now we are going to jump all the way back to the Silver Age. We're finally jumping to the Silver Age. This was actually one of the first books I bought when I got back into comics about five years ago. It was an amazing Spider-Man number 50. I, I love this cover. It caught my attention immediately when I got back into it. Uh, I actually bought a raw copy. Uh, when I when I first was getting back into buying comics. And that was one of the areas where I learned, started learning my lesson on grading on eBay <laughs> and, uh, uh, and how you cannot trust necessarily the grades that people give on eBay. That was, this is one of my, my uh, learning lessons there. Now I was lucky we had the comic boom and it kind of got me out of my, my overpay for that book. Uh, but you know, just something where you've always, it's always good to have that knowledge. If you can, if you're buying raw books, you really do need to, you need to, to study up, but we've got first appearance of Kingpin classic Ramita cover 7.5 white pages sold for $1,920. I had it going for 1800. So again, one that beat my estimate, but just barely 7%. So really more or less in line. Now this book had been over double this during the comic boom, $4,100 as the peak sale. Now let's check out this book and get an idea on the census for, for Amazing Spider-Man 50 because we're getting we're getting a lot earlier now. I mean, this is 1967. We're pretty solidly back in the Silver Age now. We take a look at the census and it's just, it's actually a similar number here. 6,302 universals, very similar to uh, Amazing Spider-Man 101. I'm actually a little bit surprised about that. That uh, Now, it is a much more popular book, so you're more likely to have this book graded, especially in the lower grades, has a lot more value. But let's take a look at that 7.5. So in the 7.5, this is still quite a bit above where it was. So if we take a look at you know early 2020 prices, I mean, this is a book that in a 7.5 was selling under $1,000. I mean, that's actually pretty shocking. Given how big of a key that is, Amazing Spider-Man number 50, first kingpin, one of the biggest well-known villains in Marvel, and a 7.5, which is a very nice grade, going for around $900, $950. Ah, man, yeah, it's it's hard to say that, but it does seem like it's leveling out a little bit, but I'd be cautious. I, 
I, st I think it could drop further. Now, granted, this is white pages. I know that's going to get somewhat of a premium, but just look, some of those books had to have been white pages that had sold back in that 2020, 2019 period. I'm sure some of these were white pages and they still weren't hidden anywhere near this number. So yeah, another book that, while this book does tend to trend up over time, so it probably isn't going to go all the way back down there. I would be shocked to see a 7.5 sell for under $1,000. I, I really would. I mean, anything can happen, but I would be surprised. I would still be cautious with it. I wouldn't be rushing out again to buy this book. I had that uh, the person on a live stream that asked recently about Amazing Spider-Man, building the Amazing Spider-Man 1 to 100 run. And I had said the similar things about the keys that it did seem like a lot of these are still trending down. So I would just be patient. There's no need to rush out to get them. Like you saw with the census here, there are tons of these books out there. There's no shortage of them. You can be patient uh, if you're trying to pick up some of these amazing Spider-Man keys. All right. Now we're jumping quite a few years earlier now. They didn't have every key in here, so I'm not talking about all of them. We're jumping to Mysterio. I really like this cover. I think this is a great cover. This is Amazing Spider-Man number 13. First appearance of Mysterio. A 5.0 went for $840. I had it going for $950. So this did go below my estimate by 12%. There's this tape pull up on the top here. And I mean, that's a it's kind of an eyesore. So I could see maybe why that might have hurt this one a little bit. But the black area here is actually really nice. This area is usually just trashed in this book and actually looks pretty nice. Uh, so I think it's a pretty decent looking copy. Just really this tape pull or whatever's going on there is the main visual detractor for it. But if we go look at Amazing Spider-Man number 13. And let's check out the census on this one, too. Now we're down to 3,000, you know, 3,076 universals, 3,600 total, half as many as we had for that amazing Spider-Man number 50. We're definitely getting down into some lower numbers. I mean, there's only one, nine, eight, 15, nine, sixes. Like the high grades are extremely rare of these early amazing Spider-Man books. And they're very, very expensive because of it, but still five Oh solid looking copy, $840. Let's check out how that sale performed versus where this book has been. And you can see some really big fluctuations with this. This first one here, almost certainly that Spider-Man movie where Mysterio was the main villain. Then it crashed back down, you know, as happens after the movies are over. Then the big spikes during the comic boom and it's coming down again. You can see it's still well above where it was. I mean, some of these low point sales, like the $840 sale, if you look at the general trend for this, the $840 sale, probably pretty safe. But given some of the other prices, I mean, this $1,350 sale that happened earlier this year, uh, some of these ones like $1,300, $1,300, $1, $1,200, those ones, it's going to be a little while, I think, until you're able to get your money back out of it. I, I think down around the $800 price point for this 5.0, not bad. Uh, I don't think that's bad. But I wouldn't be paying much more than that, at least in this grade. I, I think if you do, you've definitely got some downside risk there with that book. All right. Now we're going to Amazing Spider-Man number two. Third, a, third appearance of Spider-Man and the first appearance of the Vulture. Not nearly as popular of a book of, as Amazing Spider-Man number three. You know, first Doc Ock is definitely a more popular book. But this one, I always like the red on this cover. The old man vulture is always a little weird. <laughs> I feel like that's why it's just not super popular. This is a 3.5 for $1,620. This went way below my estimate. I had this going for $2,200. Went 26% below my estimate. Other than the Amazing Spider-Man 238, this was the biggest underperformer in my opinion. Uh, peak sale, $3,799 during the comic boom. Again, more than 50% down from that. But let's check out this book. This is definitely one that I have to think is going to have a much smaller census. Grab the wrong number there. So we're going to issue number two. If we check out the census... 2,341, 2,897 total. Uh, 198, 496s, 794s. I mean, these high grades are getting very, very scarce. But let's check out the pricing. This was a 3.5. And 
you're, I mean, yeah, it, this is tough again. You know, you look prior to the comic boom, it's sometimes it's surprising. Like you forget how affordable some of these books were. Like prior to the comic boom, a 3.5 going for anywhere from 950 to 1300 in that range. If you go back to 2019, uh, very similar going for around 1300, 1400, 1500, that type of price point. So this one at 1600, again, it doesn't seem all that unreasonable if you consider that on average, these major books have a general positive return over the long term. If you look at the general trend of these prices over the long term, you see this general upward trend. So 1600 probably isn't too risky. I feel like the downside is pretty low at, at that price. This is also a major Spider-Man book. It's going to be one of the most liquid types of books that you can own. Uh, now this pr this price, <laughs> the 2838 for the 40, that's high. Like you, that's where, and that's why you can see here. You really do need to look grade to grade. Like on this one in a 40. These prices are still way above where I would think this book should be. Like if we go back to 2020 and look at where this book was going in a 40 before these jumps in prices here, it's around a $1400 book. This is still double that. Like and so that's why you really need to do that research. If you're looking to spend this kind of money, 40 way too high. The prices are way too high on that grade. I mean, look at the 45, 2340. For some reason the 45 is going lower than the 4, but the 35 seems like pretty good value. Like right now, I'd say the three five seems like pretty decent value, relatively low risk at this type of price point. All right. There was an Amazing Spider-Man one in this. So we've got an Amazing Spider-Man number one and a nice grade too. A 5-0 went for $15,600. I had this going for $13,500. So this one beat my estimate by quite a bit, 16%. The record was $22,800. So really not down as much like we've seen with a lot of the other amazing Spider-Man keys, but it also probably didn't spike quite as much either. But uh, let's let's check out Amazing Spider-Man number one. I have owned one copy of this in my in my life. I had a I had a complete 0.5. Um, but let's go down to the 5.0 and we look at this fifteen thousand six hundred dollars sale. I mean, when you look at the general trend of this book. This, this seems pretty safe. I mean, look at look at the low end. It had some sales down around 8,000, upwards of around 12,000. I would say prior to the comic boom, this was maybe like an $11,000 book, uh, somewhere in that range. I mean, if we look at 2019, I mean, you can see here, I mean, I would call this around an $11,000 book. So 15,600, maybe a little bit on the high side like a little bit of downside risk. I and mean, you can see this 5.5 five for 15,600. That was probably a pretty good buy, uh, but a little bit on the high side, but I feel like the downside risk is pretty low. Uh, it's a decent looking copy too. It looks like most of the damage is on the spine. You can see there's some roughness along the spine here. Not a really strong color strike, but overall pretty solid book. No real big creases or anything, no chipping. Uh, it's a decent looking copy. So yeah, I could see this one coming down maybe a little bit more from here, maybe into the thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars range, but downside risk feels pretty low with this book. All right, now before we get to the Amazing Fantasy fifteen, well, actually, let's check out the uh, let's check out the census on this one. So three thousand four hundred and four, four thousand eight hundred and five total, very similar to the Amazing Spider Man two census. Now this is a book that you're going to have any grade that people will grade. I mean, like my point five, like a point five is still thousands of dollars. And so people are very motivated still to get a book graded at the very low grades. So you're more likely to have a little bit of a, a higher census count. And you can see that here. I mean, you've got two nine eights, one of them that we talked about that sold very recently on heritage five, nine sixes, but look at all these lower grade books, 174.5s, 171Os. They are very expensive, but there are options out there if you're looking to put that run together where you don't have to spend at least, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. It's still going to cost you thousands to get a 0.5, but not necessarily tens of thousands. But let's check out, I want to talk about the Amazing Spider-Man annual number one that sold, because this one was a pretty cool book. It had a, a thing on it. I think a lot of people might have missed. I saw someone talk about this on Instagram as well. You can see here, it's a 4.5. It's got this 
the Stanley signature on there. Now it's not verified. This was not witnessed. It just says Stanley written on cover and marker. It could be faked. And so you always wonder, you know, maybe somebody just wrote it on there. This does look like his signature. I've seen a number of them and they look like this. Now it's not like somebody couldn't have faked it still. So you are playing a little bit of that risk there, but this felt like a pretty good buy. $720 for a 4.5, possibly signed by Stanley. I had it going for 850 and I felt like I was even being a little low on that prior record. 2880. This was a book that went absolutely nuts during the comic boom and has corrected quite a bit. The sale was 15% below my estimate. I think this was a good buy. I think whoever picked this up, you know, I, I feel like this is a good buy. I mean, it's amazing Spider-Man annual number one. First appearance of this uh Sinister Six. Let's uh let's find the, the pricing on this one. So we got Amazing Spider-Man annual number one. This one was a 4.5. So if we go down to the 4.5, you can see they actually didn't. So they usually, oh, here it is. Here's the, the actual sale because they make that note that it was signed by Stan Lee. So they separated it out. But if we look at other the other grades, I mean, this book prior to the comic boom, 2019, this was like a $700 to $800 book already. And we are four years later. You've got that possible Stan Lee signature on there. This feels like a no risk buy. I feel like this was a very good buy. Downside risk is almost nothing. Uh, major key for Spider-Man. Nice presenting copy. And like I said, you got that signature on there, which maybe you crack it out, send it to CBCS, get it verified. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to sell for more, <laughs> but at least you can get that verified signature. Um, but I think this was a good pickup. I, I think there's very low risk with that, with that buy. And if you look at the prices for this book, and again, it all depends on the grade. I think a lot of these have either fully corrected or overcorrected. I mean, look at where this book was and look where it is now. And even if you say like, oh, that trend wasn't going to continue or uh, it's still very level or even a little bit below where it was prior to the comic boom. I feel like Amazing Spider-Man number one or Amazing Spider-Man annual number one is a very low risk pickup right now. All right. Now to the final book. Got Amazing Fantasy 15. Thanks for sticking with me for this, uh, you know, this entire video. We're talking about all the different keys that I was watching during this weekly Heritage Comic Auction. This is obviously the biggest one. This was the biggest sale of the entire auction. I mean, you can see it on here. This is on the top. I organized it from the most expensive to least expensive. Amazing Fantasy 15, 4.5, $40,800 was the most expensive book that sold in this weekly auction. It's a pretty solid looking copy too. Creamed off white pages, no Marvel chipping. That's one of the things people often talk about or complain about, whatever you want to say, with Amazing Fantasy 15. Color strike is pretty decent too. There's no real fading on the red. Uh, there's no drawing on the cover or anything. I mean, it's a solid looking book. You can tell most of the damage is probably relegated to the spine. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe one of the staples is detached or something. This one looks pretty good. Maybe this top one. Maybe this top one's detached. It looks, it's sketchy. You know, that one looks, <laughs> that one looks pretty sketchy. Got a little chip up in the corner there. Let's see how the back looks. Very similar. You know, you got a little chip up in the corner here, but this is a, you know, a little staining. You can see you got a little staining down on the bottom. This is a good looking 4.5. I mean, this really is. This is a good looking 4.5. Went for 40,800. I had it going for 42,000. 3% below my estimate. Again, basically right in line. I mean, that's one bid up at this price point. The record during the comic boom for 4.5, $84,000. So this is one that has corrected a lot. And I talked about that a lot when this book was spiking. I was telling people, be cautious with Amazing Fantasy 15. It was one of the last books to spike during the comic boom. And you'd seen this happen with every other book. They all spiked and they all corrected. And they just didn't all do it at the exact same time. And Amazing Fantasy 15 was no different. It also had a very big correction. Let's check out this book. See how see how those prices are, are doing. Because there are a lot of grades, and I've mentioned this before, that I think Amazing Fantasy 15 is a pretty safe buy. And again, it's going to be grade by grade. Um, but let's look at that 4.5 here. And yeah, here, I mean, I mean, look at this. Like here's that spike, and it corrected pretty quick. It is basically back in line with where this book was prior to the comic boom. It's a little higher. I mean, we have, 
you know, it was going around twenty eight to thirty thousand dollars in twenty twenty. But you had high sales in 2018, 2019 of you know thirty eight thousand there, thirty eight thousand nine fifty here. Now, yeah, you had low sales in mid twenties, you know, mid twenty thousands. But this is a book that when you look at this one long term, it does just on average go up every single year. So this is one that you can generally assume that these prices that it hit before are very unlikely to be returned to. I, I don't see a 4.5 going under 30 grand anytime soon, if ever again. And so, especially with this book looking as nice as it does, you know, like, like I said, it's like none of that Marvel chipping, nice color strike. It looks to be fully attached and, you know, just a good looking copy of this book. This feels like a very safe pick up to me. I mean, look at where this book has been since it corrected. I mean, this is, this has been flat for about a year and a half, you know? And, and so that feels like a pretty safe period to be buying this book now. And again, I can never say for sure anything can drop in price, but this does feel like it is a pretty safe book to be picking up right now. And like I said, that is why I, I picked one up earlier this year. I had the opportunity to pick up a 0.5, felt like a good price. And I, I went for it and it was because this is the information that I was basing it on. Um, but this does seem like this is a pretty safe book to be picking up, at least in this grade. Again, there could be other grades. That's a different story. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. That would be fun to just go over Amazing Spider-Man this time. Focus on one specific type of key book. And there were a lot of different ASM keys that came for sale in this auction. You typically have a lot of Amazing Spider-Man books that come up during these weekly Heritage Comic Auctions. And this one had, I mean, it had everything and some pretty nice books too. I mean, a 5.0 of Amazing Spider-Man 1, a 4.5 of Amazing Fantasy 15. But you can see here, there were some books that I said, I think are still going down, that you still want to be cautious around. And there are other books that I think look pretty safe to be picking up. And that's why before you're making these types of purchases, if you're spending hundreds, thousands of dollars on these comics, I just, I recommend getting pricing services, you know, get a pricing service like GPA or go collect or in the future fanalytics, get one of those services so that you can make as informed of a decision as you can, but hopefully enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell, all that kind of stuff. I get more videos over here. If you'd like to watch some of my other videos, subscription button is right here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.